today we'll see the cartilages of a model of larynx so there are the cartilages is divided into paired cartilages and unpaired cartilages so in this model we can see a paired unpaired cartilages that is one it is cricoid cartilage then a thyroid cartilage and a epiglottis so these are the unpaired cartilages of larynx so we'll see each one so first is the thyroid cartilage so the thyroid cartilage it consists of it made up by the two lamina so you can see the two lamina so this is the one lamina and here this is the another lamina so the two lamina it consists it is quadrilateral in shape it consists of an upper border a posterior border a inferior border and a anterior border so the posterior border it is far away okay so the anterior border it is joins at the median plane but at the upper part it is not joined so it forms the thyroid notch and in the lower part it forms a prominence that is known as the laryngeal prominence then the upper border it is upper border gives the attachment of a membrane so this membrane it is known as the thyrohyoid membrane so here what is seen this is the hyoid bone so this is thyrohyoid membrane now we'll see the posterior border so the posterior border it is extends upwards and downwards to forms the superior cornua or the horn and the inferior cornua and or the horn so then if you see the inferior border inferior border it gives the insertion of a muscle known as cricothyroid muscle at the median plane it is attached with the cricoid cartilage by a structure known as conus elasticus so here it is known as the conus elasticus so then there is the two surfaces there is the outer surface and within inside there is the inner surface so if you see the outer surface it gives the oblique line it extend from superior thyroid tubercle near to the superior cornua and inferior thyroid tubercle here it is near in the middle line of inferior border so here it gives the three muscles attachments that is inferior constrictor of the pharynx then thyrohyoid then sternothyroid so the three muscles it gives that is sternothyroid thyrohyoid and inferior constrictor of the pharynx so this forms the thyroid cartilage so if you see the inner aspect of the thyroid cartilage see i'm turning this so the inner aspect of the thyroid cartilage so you can see there is the two mucosal fold that is one this the walk it is the vestibular fold and a vocal fold the two fold of mucous membrane that is the vestibular fold and the vocal fold lateral to that that is thyroepiglotticus muscle so there is thyroepiglotticus muscle also there is one more ligament that is thyroepiglotticus ligament here it is thyroepiglotticus ligament so the vocal fold the vestibular fold vocal fold thyroepiglotticus ligament thyroepiglotticus muscle. so this is about the thyroid cartilage okay now we'll see the cricoid cartilage so the lower part here this is the cricoid cartilage it is a ring like structure see i'm turning this so this is a uh, ring like structure so this is the cricoid cartilage so the anterior arch anterior it is narrower and it is known as the arch posteriorly it is broader and this one it is known as the lamina of the cricoid cartilage so anterior it is the arch and posterior it is the lamina of the cricoid cartilage so anteriorly it gives the attachment of the thyro cricothyroid muscle and laterally it gives the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle and posteriorly it gives the attachment of posterior cricoarytenoid muscle so the three muscles the cricothyroid lateral cricoarytenoid posterior cricoarytenoid so above this no so this is what the cricoid cartilage the next one what i told it is the muscle it is so this is the epiglottis the cartilage is the epiglottis the epiglottis cartilage it consists of the upper end and the lower end and there is the two borders right and left borders the upper end it is related with the tongue with the median epiglottic fold and the lower end it is attached to the 
thyroid cartilage by thyroepiglotticus uh, ligament and it is also attached with the hyoid bone so here this is the hyoid bone so it is also attached with the hyoid bone by the hy hyoepiglotticus ligament so this is what the cartilaginous part of the larynx and in the posteriorly here we will get the arytenoid uh, cart the, pay and pay the paired cartilages that is arytenoid, corniculate and cuneiform. Now the same thing we will see in the specimen. So the cartilages, so this is the enter, it is the larynx. So above here it is thyroid cartilage and here it is the cricoid cartilage. So the thyroid cartilage, here it is the thyroid notch. Okay, and this is the laryngeal prominence and here it is the upper border and here the lower border and here this is the oblique line which gives the attachment of the muscles and here it gives the superior corona and inferior corona. So now here it is cricoid muscle, cricoid cartilage along with cricothyroid muscle. If you see the posterior aspect, so we will turn it. So the posterior aspect you can see this is the epiglottis. So the epiglottis it is anteriorly so epiglottis it is anteriorly attached to the tongue by the median and lateral glossoepiglottic fold and posteriorly it is forms the mucous membrane now in the lower part here it is the lamina of the cricoid cartilage it gives the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle okay that is posterior cricoarytenoid muscle so here this membrane this is known as Ari epiglottis membrane. So here it is the Ari epiglottic membrane. So this is the Ari epiglottic membrane. I just opened this. So here this is the Ari epiglottic membrane. So here you can see the fossa. So this is known as the piriform fossa. So bounded posteriorly by this Ari epiglottic fold, anteriorly by this thyrohyoid fold. Thyrohyoid membrane and Ari epiglottic fold. So it forms the piriform fossa. So here it forms the cavity of larynx. And if you see this thyrohyoid membrane, so this thyrohyoid membrane it is pierced by internal laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal vessels. So you can see clearly this is the thyrohyoid membrane, it is pierced by internal laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal vessels. Now we'll see the interior of the larynx. So the interior of the larynx it extends from the epiglottis to the cricoid cartilage. Okay. So now the, it is that is epiglottis or the laryngeal or the uh, laryngeal inlet. It is known as the larynx inlet of the larynx. It is extend from the inlet of the larynx to the cricoid cartilage. Now we'll see the inlet of the larynx. It is bounded anteriorly by this epiglottis medially or each side by this epiglottic fold posteriorly by interarytenoid membrane so this is the inlet of larynx it is down it directed upwards and posteriorly so here it is the inlet of larynx it opens into the laryngopharynx now within the cavity it, it consists of two folds you can see clearly here the upper one it is known as the vestibular fold the lower one it is known as the vocal fold so, so first we will see the vestibular fold so the there are two on each side there is right and left vestibular fold the space in between the junction between the right and left vestibular fold here it is known as so this part it is known as the rima vestibule and if you see the vocal fold so this is the vocal fold the space in between the two right and left vocal fold it is known as rima glottidis so here this is the rima glottidis so here this is the rima vestibule so here it is the vestibular fold and this is the vocal fold the space in between these two folds it is known as the sinus of larynx so this is the sinus of larynx so because by these two folds the larynx it is divided into three parts part above the vestibular fold it is known as the vestibule of the larynx so this part it is the vestibule of the larynx the part between the vestibular fold and the vocal fold it is known as the sinus or the ventricle of the larynx part below the vestibule it is known as the infraglottic part so this is about the inlet of or the cavity of larynx